First of all, welcome everyone here in Dublin. Hope you have a great time here. Probably some of one already had a great lunch as well. Um, this is a session uh, about Drupal 8 uh, hidden power entity reference as a component based site builder. I will show you how I figured out to utilize entity references to create a rich, flexible website. Ah, okay. I will be uh, more loud. Okay. So, uh, this session is about entity references, uh, which uh, are now hopefully built in Drupal 8 core. And I will show you how I utilize them to build rich, uh, multilingual, multi-scaled, multi-layout websites. Okay, let's go. Uh, this is actually a beautiful slide, not for the session, but for my bosses and for search engines, so let's keep it. Uh, uh, shortly, my name is uh, Anton. I'm a uh, UI lead in Acronis, and I'm working on the user interfaces development, and right now, uh, as I wrote here, I'm working on the new concept of content management systems based on atomic design principles. Uh, so let's talk about it. And first thing we need to talk about is entity. Entity is in core now. Hey, that's, that's great. That's really great. <laughs> uh, the only thing you should know about entity, it's simple. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's really simple, believe me. Uh, here uh, we can see a part of internal structure of entity in Drupal core, but my session is not about Drupal core and internal structure. I want to talk more about site building site. So from this point of view, entity is simple set of fields, nothing more. Uh, so let's look closer, what is entity? Entity, uh, for example, node entity is just a title and body field, nothing more. Uh, so node is an entity with uh, two predefined fields. Um, each of field can be treated as atom of content, atomic uh, piece of content. And uh, the whole entity is kind of molecule. So you can define different kind of add-ons, fields, you can mix them together in bundles, and you can define new entity types by uh, defining different set of fields on them. Uh, this is a really basic princip uh, principle, but um, it gives us really more power. And uh, it's also know well known as atomic design. Um, you can read more about atomic design using this link. Uh, but um, I want to focus more on uh, Drupal application of these principles and how we can use entity references to, to get the power of atomic design right in Drupal. Um, okay, we can, uh, we have built-in entities in Drupal, uh, such as node entity, user, term, comment block, menu item, and uh, many others. All of them are really simple, and uh, as you can see, we are pretty similar because we are just set of fields, nothing more. Um, if you want, you can define custom entities, for example, using ECK model. This is the entity construction kit. It's pretty handy. Um, so, for example, if you need some specific entity, you, ju you just can create it via Drupal admin interface. You can set custom fields and so on. Uh, you also have opportunity to create media entities. S what is media entity? It's, uh, for example, YouTube video uh, or any other resource other, other the web. Uh, right in core, uh, we have an ability to translate entities. So any of media entity, custom entity, or built-in entities can be easily translated using core mechanism. So you can create multilingual website and content. Um, let's see at an example. For example, we have a user profile uh, with a name and picture. We have uh, another user profile with its name and picture. And now we have a node with title and body. And we can define a custom field uh, which can hold references to user profiles. 
and here uh, we get we have uh, entity reference. So the next part is about references. Uh, entity reference is now in Drupal with eight core, and that's great as well. Uh, let's look um, a more complex example of using entity references. So, for example, we have a node and we have a user profile and we want to have a user profile to be displayed inside the node. Uh, it could be not just uh, a user profile who created this node, it could be just mentioned inside the node or uh, this node could be a biography of a, a user. So what we want to do, we want to nest uh, one entity inside another entity. And we can do it by referencing to this entity. So this is another example of using refer references. Uh, here we not just reference one entity from another entity. We want to nest one entity inside another entity and to render it um, as a hier hierarchical structure. Uh, let's look what we will have using such mechanism. We can inline, uh, we can inline edits of entities of nested entities. So, for example, here once node is rendered, we can uh, <coughs> switch to the inline editing mode and uh, edit user profile right on the node page. That is pretty cool and handy to manage. We can also have contextual links inside the Drupal core which allows us uh, not to edit in line, but to go directly to the entity edit form. Uh, we can also have uh, inline entity form embedded right in the node editing page. So we can uh, go to the editing page of this node and we can embed user uh, inline form right in the node form. All of these examples are pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, it's just uh, the beginning, but let's go through so we can see the big picture. Um, entity pickers allows us to select uh, existing entities and uh, reference of them inside another entities. So for example here we can uh, fire uh, entity browser for users and select a, a required user without searching it, without uh, copy pasting its ID. Uh, interesting thing that we can reference not just to entity but to specific revision of an entity. So if you don't, for example, you have a user profile, you updated it, but you don't want to publish it on the node page yet. So you can just uh, sp specify a specific uh, revision of this user profile and to render it on the node page. And interesting thing that you can uh, specify different revisions uh, on different pages, for example. So you can uh, post uh, updated user profile on the home page, for example, but you can uh, post uh, an older version of user profile somewhere uh, somewhere else. It's, uh, it's possible because it's just entity reference and it's revision. Another interesting thing is the view mode. So using this contrib module, you can specify view mode in which to render a referencing entity. So for example, when you are referencing the user profile, you can render it, uh, you can create a new view mode and you can render it as a, for example, an avatar or you can just display a username or for example, you can specify a contact user view mode and render a user profile as a contact button. It's really simple and uh, it gives us really real power. Another thing you can uh, do with entity references is uh, live preview. So when uh, editing uh, one entity, which reference in another entity, you can preview what you will get. And uh, this is done by entity reference live preview module. Um, everything sounds cool and uh, pretty flexible, but we have a problem. Uh, we want to create rich pages like that. This is a pretty simple, but uh, anyway, it consists of many entities, many pieces of content, and uh, entity reference is not just enough because we couldn't always reference menu item from menu, breadcrumbs, and so on. So we need to have uh, something to help us here. 
we want to have the entity references, we want to have its flexibility, but we also want to be able to create pages of any structure, of any layout, without dealing with references always. And here is <coughs> where powers comes up. I call it entity tree. Entity tree is a is a kind of representation of our page. Let's look to it. For example, this page can be represented as a tree. Uh, we can uh, define a page body. Uh, yeah, let's start from uh, this block of content first, not from all the page. Uh, let's call it page body. Page body can be presented as uh, two things, list of nodes and sidebar. Uh, we have a list of nodes on the left and we have sidebar on the right. Uh, list of nodes uh, consists of node teasers, each consists of title field, body field, and embedded user profile. We are referenced. Each user profile as well consists of name, picture, and other fields probably. Sidebar uh, consists of blocks. Each block has title and content. Um, in terms of entities, uh, this is uh, some kind of such structure. So uh, we have column layout entity using ECK for example we can define new type of entity for example to column layout and we can then reference other entities from it for example list of nodes can be referenced a uh, list of nodes is another type of uh, layout entity stack layout um, is it clear I, I'm not sure because I'm always thinking about pages uh, in this way so should I give some more comments? Or what do you think? Is it is it uh, is structure is it clear? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Um, but uh, this structure describes only only the page body. But how about the whole page to be uh, entity tree? It's uh, it's already it's. Uh, also can be done easily. So we can define a page entity. Page can be uh, split in menu, in header, and body, and in footer. And this is how it can be represented. So the whole page is a stack layout. Menu is a special menu entity consisting of link entities. Header is a custom entity. Um, this is a special thing because we can uh, not just uh, create it, it each new time, but we can uh, use dynamic uh, variables to render breadcrumbs and page title dynamically on, its, on every page. Um, body is uh, our previous entity tree structure and footer is just a piece of text. So uh, what we have here, here we can see that we can, we, we are using uh, layout entities. This is another concept. Um, and it's uh, really important to make all this happen. So I suggest to treat layouts as a content as well uh, by using layout entities. This is a difference uh, between, for example, this concept and panels or something like this, because um, once we define new custom entities as layouts, we can no, of course, we can define custom layouts by defining custom entities. Uh, we have a layout translation out of the box since uh, this is a just entity. Uh, we can have layout revisioning out of the box since layout is just an entity, and so on and so on. Of course, we can reference layout from layout. Um, and this gives us uh, ultimate flexibility. So once uh, layout <coughs> our entities, we can uh, highly reuse layouts through our website. We can, uh, because this is just re reference, nothing more. We can uh, create different pages. I will uh, show you an example right now. Um, so yes, it's highly reusable. It's replaceable since it's just reference, nothing more. E and it's customizable since it's just custom entity, we can, create, we can create new entities, we can define new modes, we can specify fields, and uh, it's up to us 
No, no, no code we, we need to write down. Um, and uh, and uh, we can have more power using layout entities. First thing is a flat nesting. Uh, let's show an, exa an example. This is a pretty common company uh, page where we would like to display a list of directors and list of managers. So uh, this is a stack layout. We have a title, we have a two sections, directors and managers. Uh, each section displays user profiles. So directors users profiles and managers user profiles are all the same. It's just user profiles. And we can reference uh, user profiles right, right from our page using entity reference. So this is how it could be done. Uh, we represent this page as an entity tree, so root entity is a management team. Uh, it consists of two child entities, directors and managers. Uh, each uh, refer uh, refers to user profiles. So this is how it could be achieved using entity layout and using entity layout entities. Layout entities, just layout entities. So management team is a stack layout, this is a whole our page. Directors uh, is a three column layout entity and managers is a five column entity. Uh, so to not to define custom entity each new time we need the custom layout, we can just define a multi-column layout entity and then create the custom view modes. For example, one view mode could be three column, another view mode could be five columns and so on. So Yes, this is uh, uh, how we can represent this page using entities and ent layout entities. But uh, the thing is, we can just uh, not do it like this. So stack layout reference to three column layout reference to user profile. Because this is um, three levels of nesting and uh, it's, it, it will be rendered uh, by recursion. So instead of doing this, uh, we can do like this. So we can define a special kind of field on the page. Uh, it's a single field and it holds uh, references to another entities. The only thing we need to do uh, to make it work, we need to be able to define um, three structures inside a field. For Drupal 7, uh, it exists, uh, it, it is an existing module, it calls just a tree. Uh, so we can install it, it and uh, tick a checkbox for any field and we, it will be able to hold the uh, tree structure. Uh, so using this uh, method, we can define any layouts uh, and we can uh, hold the references to other entities such as layout entities or just regular entities. The thing is, since this is a single field with items, we can just drag and drop these items. So for example, we can uh, drag uh, manager user profile up in this structure and it will be rendered in directors section and vice versa. So um, this is a pretty straightforward example, but I would like to show how we can manipulate uh, references in this way. So this will be rendered as a single pass without recursion. And uh, another thing we can drag and drop items on the whole page using standard Drupal mechanism. Um, another interesting thing that we can achieve using entity references is kind of dynamic reference. So let's look uh, on this example again um, I mean this page so what we would like to do we don't want to specify reference each new time uh, a new director in our company it will appear we won't just for example have a special tag field on the user profile and for example we can tag user profiles with the managers or with directors tag and then it, it will be more convenient just to 
get list of uh, user profiles by this tag. So how this could be done? This could be done by a view field module. Uh, we can create a view entity using ECK, for example. We can uh, give it a title and we can create a special kind of field, view field. View field uh, can hold uh, a reference to a view and uh, we can pass uh, different arguments to this field per each entity. So, for example, yeah, uh, this view will uh, reference to user profiles uh, marked by special tag. We can just define this view in using admin interface and we can reference to this view from uh, view entities passing different arguments. So, uh, using this technique, we can represent uh, our uh, well-known tree as, uh, as a this structure. So, our page is still a stack layout entity and it consists of two <coughs> view entities. First view entity displays all user profiles tagged by hashtag directors and uh, the second by hashtag managers. Um, the thing here is uh, everything on this page are just entities e and entity references. So we can we can apply any thing which uh, support entity reference. We can specify revision. We can translate any of uh, any part of this page. Uh, we can edit edit inline any of these entities. Uh, we can specify different view modes. We can create custom entities and so on, so on, so on. It's uh, it's a pure freedom for us, and we can build any layouts and any type of data. The thing is, the whole page is done in the same way, uh, using entities and entity references. And uh, using this uh, technique of uh, flat nesting, uh, it's not, actually it's not required, it's just more convenient way to do things, since you can uh, rearrange items on the page using the single entity and performance is much better because it will be rendered uh, in single pass because it's just a single field with many items and using uh, dynamic reference we can uh, create a dynamic structures uh, but as well of uh, entities so we will be able to edit in line to specify uh, revisions and so on as well uh, so uh, finally, I would make uh, some notes. Uh, I suggest you to be minimalistic. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, we can try to build our websites without using the field collections module because uh, entity and entity reference built in core is almost the same functionality because you just can define new entity type if you want using ECK and then you can embedded inside any other entity using entity in inline form, for example. So this module is just a duplicate. Another thing at field group, it's uh, also a useful module, but uh, using entities and entity references, we can uh, live without it as well. Panels, of course panels. Uh, by defining custom view modes and layout entities, uh, we can live without panels, because uh, we can create layout of any structure, we can reference and reuse layouts from page to page, we can do anything we want, because we have entities, custom entities, view modes, and we can define templates, and all of this is done by Drupal core. We don't need uh, any modules here for that. Display Suite is also a good module, but uh, we can live without it, because we have Again, view modes and custom templates for view modes. So combining this technique, we can uh, emulate the display suite behavior as well. Paragraphs uh, is great. Uh, I like it, really liked it. But mm, the thing about paragraphs, uh, it doesn't give us a full flexibility. For example, we can not manipulate an entity tree. Uh, we Sometimes it's hard to nest entities and uh, to create a complex structures because each new time you can you, you have to create a nested paragraph 
it's not that easy and uh, paragraphs model is a huge uh, bunch of code so but uh, it can be achieved also by custom entities view modes and templates built in Drupal core uh, second note uh, stay flexible what does it mean but not too much yeah but not too much um, this technique of using entities and references uh, seems to be really quick and easy and uh, flexible uh, as it can be, but uh, we need to understand what we are doing and uh, what solution we use for particular task. Uh, so let's look on this slide. We can uh, split our content uh, into types. We can uh, treat uh, some content as flexible content. What does it mean? It does, it does mean that um, we have custom fields, uh, we want a dynamic order, and we have flexible layout. So, for example, re remember with uh, about page, with a list of directors and managers. It is a custom layout, uh, and uh, in most cases we don't uh, have uh, such page on the website. Uh, it's only a single page on the website, and it has custom layout, custom fields, and probably we want to rearrange it uh, from time to time. So it, uh, it's not convenient to create a structured content, it's better to go with a flexible layout, and here entities and nesting, nested entities and references is a good thing to do. So uh, because we can uh, have per entity customization, so we can customize this only this page, uh, we can nest entities inside it to not duplicate content uh, and we can translate uh, <coughs> specify revision and view mode for each entity that's pretty cool and we can uh, have layout entities which will help us to manage our layouts without uh, additional modules and templates we can just create a, an entity and treat it as a layout by view mode and uh, template for this view mode uh, but on the other side, uh, we can have a structured content on our website. Structured content uh, is a content with constant fields and constant order and predefined layout. For example, if we, we have a car selling website and we want uh, to have a car details pages, uh, all of these pages will be uh, with the same content of same structure and in the same layout. So in this uh, case, it's better to go with a standard way and Drupal will handle it uh, pretty cool. Uh, we can have per bundle customization, so we can define new entity bundles. We can define custom fields for it. Um, it will be just single level of entities, so we are not required to nest entities inside the car entity because car is simple object and we can represent it with just the fields and we can have simple layout solution for example we can define a tick uh, template or we can use a display suit as well it uh, work really nice with a structured content but the classic problem of Drupal is to deal with flexible content that's why um, such models appear at, like panels, panelizer, display suit and so on because all of them are, are trying to solve this problem. Problem of flexible <coughs> content, which is uh, customizable, which should be customizable, it should be reusable. And uh, now we can do it using entities and entity references right in code. Uh, don't be afraid and uh, experiment. What does it mean? Uh, for example, we have flexible content, okay. We have structured content, okay. But why not to include flexible content inside structured content? In example, um, if we have a car details page, why not to define a car description field, which could be a flexible content, so it can hold nested entities and we can uh, specify any layout in the car description. For example, we can make it to column layout, we can nest uh, slideshow inside but the whole page uh, will be structured and will be uh, rendered using the standard mechanisms uh, 
I like to experiment. Um, so I created this uh, contribution module. Uh, it's really small. It uh, just uh, gives uh, a power of uh, flat nesting. So you can rearrange items inside um, one entity. And uh, I, would, I will uh, continue to support it uh, and to add more features I talked about today because initially this module was for Drupal 7 but I would like to continue support it for Drupal 8 as well. Um, finally, I would like to see you on this slide and uh, I would ask you to always remember that we are not designing just pages. We are designing a system of components. So every page um, is not just a content, uh, it's a structure of some data. And this structure could be represented in a tree, for example, and tree can be easily managed and rendered using entities and references and nesting, of course. Okay, it's time to repeat. Briefly, really briefly, we are, we are at DrupalCon Dublin. <laughs> you are uh, listening to my session. My bosses are happy. <laughs> Entity is simple. Uh, we can nest entities by referencing, referencing one from another. And these give us a power. Um, but please, be minimalistic. Stay flexible, uh, because in, uh, of course, yes, you are minimalistic, uh, but uh, we don't lose the flexibility, because we instead we have uh, more flexibility uh, when we are using references. But not too much, uh, because of structured content and uh, standard mechanisms of managing and rendering it. Uh, don't be afraid and experiment. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, just one moment. Uh, finally, please love Drupal. Discover entity references like me and do backup uh, with my company. <laughs> this is a sponsor slide. That's it. It's time for questions. Yes. Um? Demo? Uh, actually, I have a demo, but I'm not... Uh, I, can, I can try. Yeah. We have time, actually. I can show my real website, it's, it's powered by Drupal 7, but uh, I can show how all of this can be achieved. Why not? Okay, this is my real website. Uh, it's not uh, up to date probably, but it uh, utilizing this methodology. So this is a whole of the whole of this page is an entity. Just note, if we go to the edit mode, uh, we can see uh, a body field. A body field is a is this. Uh, magic field of uh, flat using flat nesting so you can see here yeah uh, body field holds uh, free entity references so here we have uh, layout entity uh, columns of columns type here we have uh, two text block entities and uh, you can specify a view mode here per each of entity. I can... Uh, yeah, you can edit uh, not in line because uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm... I like to edit in a pop-up, but you can use it. It looks like here. So you are on the same page, but uh, each uh, entity will fire up in the pop-up. And uh, here you can, ah, this is a column entity, it's, it doesn't hold data. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this is just uh, 
uh, references dialog and you can edit uh, the whole entity inside pop-up and you can went back to the Viz management page. So here we can use uh, inline entity form instead and not edit entities in a dialog but uh, for me it's, mu it's just much more convenient way of editing uh, in a pop-up. So this page, we, this page uh, stays fast without all these entity inline entities stuff. Uh, we also can specify uh, CSS classes per entity. It's convenient way, for example, here you can see modifier, which uh, will center the text inside uh, the whole page. Uh, we can we can drag, we can reorder entities on this page. For example, yeah, I also have a contextual links here, so I can edit each entity separately without going to edit mode of the whole page. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole site is built on top of uh, this technology, and. Uh, I can show you a more complex example, for example, yeah, this page consists of, consists of um, a lot of entities and layout entities. Here we have a tab view, so we can switch between tabs. Uh, we can navigate by uh, this uh, scroll spy navigation and the whole this page is done by I can I should authorize once again have edit button so it's a more complex tree uh, you can see uh, four sections here this is a live sandbox requirements references and bricks uh, each consists another tree structure inside for example first section consists uh, a root entity is a uh, tabs and it holds uh, two entities, uh, Drupal 8 and Drupal 7, which holds another entity inside. And uh, so you can see how a tabs uh, is rendered. So we can add uh, another entity here and it will create another tab for it. You can <laughs> try it. Yeah, <laughs> so I just created another child item inside the tab entity layout, and uh, it's 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 rendered, and we can uh, nest any content inside it. We can uh, rearrange this tree structure, and as you, as you can see, I'm not just uh, holding the whole tree inside this page. I splitting it in uh, sub entities, so <coughs> it's just. Uh, more manageable because uh, a long long tree is not that handy to manage at least for now maybe i just overlooked something but you speak of flats and is it all a tree right? i mean by flat i mean uh, not a simple list of items i mean that the whole tree is is stored inside one field as a flat structure okay so in in uh, then page uh, is starting to render. It just loads one field from database, and uh, in the database uh, I defined a new column which holds a level 
inside the tree. But uh, anyway, this is just one s single field, uh, f a flat uh, tree structure. That's, w that's why I, I, I call it flat nesting. Um, so yeah, it could be could be shown here. So this is just uh, <laughs> a standard uh, entity reference field uh, with uh, six items inside, and uh, it's it is stored in database as a flat structure. So this is just uh, regular items. That's why it. Uh, performance is much better and you can rearrange the whole tree uh, in the single interface. For example, with paragraphs you can do things like that because it's always nested. You can you cannot drag uh, one nested entity inside another nested entity. But here you can because it's a flat structure and you can manipulate it in in a single place. Uh, this is just a tree module. It's for Drupal 7. Uh, it just allows you to make this tree structure on any type of fields, especially on entity references. Uh, it, it uses um, entity behaviors to define a custom column in database. It's an uh, existing entity functionality in entity core. Uh, so it's, it's just, uh, it just adds a special database column and uh, enables this uh, tree manipulation for entity reference multi-field. That's it. It's it's really it's around one one hundred lines of code. But it's only Drupal seven. Uh, now it's Drupal seven, but uh, it's porting to Drupal eight. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very interesting approach, um, but uh, I'm thinking if a customer wants to create a new simple page seems a bit more complex than it is necessary. Do they then have to uh, select an entity, a layout entity, before they can create a new page? Or how? what, what, what would the procedure flow? No, 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 no. Uh, just look, this is a, uh, a, good, a good question. Probably I will should talk more about uh, simple cases. Uh, so uh, this field is just entity reference field. And by default, uh, uh, it just holds references. So if, for example, you want to create a text page, you can just create a text entity without any layout entities, and it will be rendered as a text block inside page. So um, another thing, you can use the inline entity form to embed uh, entity form inside a page creation. So you can just here, you will not see things like that. This is for more complex layouts. Here, you can you will see an uh, inline, editi inline editing form out of the box, and you will be able to put text inside. So it's uh, really flexible, and uh, you can configure it uh, up to you. So you can do things like that, like me, because I like complex structures. Uh, but uh, as well, you can... Uh, cover basic cases by simply using inline entity form. So it, 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 will, it, will, it will look like paragraphs model, almost. So, any other questions so far? I can show you a different, a more examples of site uh, I've built using this methodology. For example, interesting is uh, how you can manage uh, slideshows. Uh, this is now a real production website. Uh, interesting thing is uh, on top of it, this is a slideshow. So the whole this stuff is just a layout entity of type carousel. And it holds uh, five entity references inside it. And I just defined a custom template. And... Uh, and uh, from now, I can create uh, any slideshows throughout the website. All of them can be customized and can hold different entities. Uh, how it 
looks like. Let me do sign in. So yeah, uh, now we can see contextual links right here in the slideshow and we can edit any of this entity separately. Yeah, it's just an uh, entity of type image. It uh, consists of single field of type image. And we can edit it separately, but we can as well edit the whole page. Yeah, you can see here that uh, this is the entity of type uh, slideshow. It consists of uh, one field, slides, and uh, it can hold uh, references to other entities. And here we can also specify view mode, CSS classes, and so on. And we can, of course, rearrange slides easily using this entity reference theme. So it's uh, almost up to you which type of content, which type of layout you want. It's kind of Lego constructor. So you can define new type of bricks, you can define new type of modes, you can specify any type of uh, template. And this is done, all of this is done by Drupal core mostly. So the only thing you can do yourself is a flat nesting, but it's not required, you can do without it. It's just a uh, little bit more convenient and faster. So it's a thing I discovered it uh, several years ago once I created a, I can show you our website. We, are wor we were working on rebuilding our website, just one note. Uh, you can see it's a really complex layout consisting of many, many, many columns, blocks and so on and this is all through by the website. It also multilingual so it every piece of content should be translated. And uh, I started thinking how we can achieve that. And uh, several years later, I came up with uh, this idea. Um, I, uh, maybe I missed a point, but uh, why didn't I just use a local image field for your gallery and uh, like multiple values and a field parameter of type character or something? Uh, because you can, you can, uh, it's not uh, something special, of course you can, but uh, it's a much more convenient way because you, ca you have a contextual menu for each entity. You can reuse images from slideshow to slideshow. So for example, you can define two slideshows and to post the same image to both. If you will use a field, you cannot just uh, reuse a field item between two entities because it will be inside every entity. But that way I have to create a new node entity just for having one single image. No, 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 just image uh, entity. For, for, for it's not node. So, but, but you've created a, like a node type of type image and that holds one field for mm -hmm. one image. So we have like why why page not why not uh -huh. why not two or I don't I don't see the point but maybe I missed something the point the point is that node module is uh, good for creating pages because it uh, handles stuff like page URL uh, creation date and it 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 just uh, extended entity for these uh, entities we just define a custom entity type image. It's really simple, it just holds one field. And, but, but you can reuse images throughout website. You can post uh, the same image inside 
slideshow. You can post the same image inside a page. It's uh, it's super flexible. And but you use the same thing, uh, same strategy for the text field you just created. Yeah, you you can okay you can I but know, I just ask you. So you have a known note type type text which holds a simple text field. Yeah yeah I can show you actually uh, types I have. No, so anti type yeah. yeah. So you're creating a lot of different entity types. You can see uh, you can see this page. This is uh, at least. Yeah, okay, that's what I was looking for. These are the different types uh, defined throughout the interface. You can create new types right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not content type. It's just entity type. It's uh, lightweight. It's very lightweight. Okay, thank you. But the thing is, uh, the whole site is the same you can manipulate it any way you can translate any part of it you can even uh, have different layouts per per different languages because it's just entity you can translate entity and you can translate layout you can have different layouts you can have different sections in different languages it's super flexible and all of these can be done via admin interface and with core modules almost that's a thing. Uh, another quick question. Um, so the layout is uh, the first entity, and for example, a three-column layout, and then you have uh, nested or indented uh, yeah, yeah. the three columns. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, how does the layout uh, know which columns come afterwards? Is, or how is the template structured? Because it's all a mul multiple field, right? You have a multiple... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which holds multiple entities, and how do you put the the uh, three columns inside the actual columns? <laughs> actually, you know? uh, it, it it could be done. Uh, it could be done. Uh, two options. You have two options here. We can define a view mode, three column, and we can uh, then in template uh, access to this view mode and to to render columns in a three column or two column and so on. Uh, another option, you can just uh, have dynamic number of columns. We can just uh, display the whole items as the columns. Or, or a question about template, how I access in the child entities? Yeah, if you have a normal um, uh, multiple field, mm -hmm. then it just renders one template for each field top yes, down, Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So you now have a three column layout, then the three columns, then a five mm -hmm. column layout, then the five columns. So it won't render everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a good question. In the same way. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You need to, I got you need to it. I got it. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Yes, this is a good question, and uh, this is uh, those uh, one hundred lines of code of customization in tree module, uh, which uh, scans the list of uh, items in the field and then uh, create a nested structure from it yeah. by the single pass. Yes, this is done by a third party module. This is about flat nesting. But if you don't use flat nesting, if you just nest entities inside entities using reference, uh, entity already inside another entity, you can access it directly. Yeah, okay. Yes, but but about this uh, layout, yes, it's a customization. Uh, it's a customization. Okay, if uh, no questions anymore, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening to me.